Riverpod is the state management which is in addition to the normal provider package and we looked in the last tutorial at all the providers the Riverpod package has and in this tutorial we want to look at all the notifiers which are here on the right side. Each notifier has some state encapsulated inside of them and for the change notifier the state is mutable which means you can easily change it. However for the notifier it is immutable so you cannot change it directly you always need to copy it and create a new instance of your state and then you need to put this new instance inside of your state notifier and update it because of the mutable state which the change notifier has we always need to refresh the ui manually so you always have to call a message notify listeners to actually make this ui update on the other hand on the state notifier it is always automatically updated because if we override the state then he will automatically update our UI and you don't need to care about the update anymore. Another thing about the change notifier is that it exposes the state to the outside world and everyone from the outside can change the state and also access it which is not really cool so you have not much control over it. However for the state notifier it doesn't expose the state and it's also not changeable from the outside so you can only change the state within the class. We want now to look at two practical examples which are showing how to use the state notifier provider and also the change notifier provider. And by the way if you haven't checked out the last video then I totally recommend it to you because there I state everything what Riverpod is and I go into detail about all the providers the Riverpod package has. If you haven't watched the last video, then make sure that you put here the Flutter Riverpod dependency inside of your dependencies of your pubspec jaml file and also put here in your main file this provider scope around your app and then we can get started. We want to start here with the change notifier provider and therefore we have here UI with two buttons. So for example, we have a car and we can increase it, the speed and we can also hit the brake to decrease the speed again. Therefore we create here our change notifier provider and inside of it comes our state. So we create here a new state object and this is then extendable from the change notifier. Here inside you put the state, so in this case we only have a speed state and we also can create here two methods. So first of all to increase the state if we click on this button then we want to increase the speed by 5 and we also need to notify the listeners because what we learned in the beginning you always have to manually update the UI and if you don't do this then it won't update our UI. Secondly we create the second method hit break. And here we want to decrease the speed by 30. However, we also want to make sure that we are not going below zero because you cannot have a negative speed. Otherwise, we always decrease the speed by 30. And again, you need to notify then the listeners to update the UI. So to sum it up for the change notifier again is that this state is mutable. So we can change directly the state without creating a new representation or new instance of the state. And then we always call these notify listeners to update our UI manually. Now let's go here down to our build method and we want to implement these both buttons. Therefore, we first of all access here our car provider to get the state. So we simply call here the watch method of our build method and you only can get access to this watch method if you extend from the consumer widget which we have learned in the last tutorial and here inside of this watch method you put this car provider to get the state of our provider and then we can access here the state and can for example go to this text here and change this zero to a real value so we access then this car speed which we have here at the top. Now let's create the functionality for our buttons. So here within our build buttons method, I put the context and also this provider model inside. And we also put it then here to our button method, the context and this car notifier. Every time if you click here on this increase plus five button, then we want to call here this car dot increase method of our change notifier. And this will then increase our speed and we can try it out. So if we click here, everything is working fine. Instead of accessing this over our card notifier directly, you can also access it over the context. 
So you could also write here context read and here inside you put the instance of your provider inside and then you call also the method increase. For our second button, we also can then implement it over our context. So you can call here context.read and again, we use here our car provider instance and then we call here the method hit break to actually call here this method within our change notifier. And now we can also try it out. So here, every time if we click on hit break, it is working fine. One thing to mention is that you always have in all of your notifiers a dispose method. And here you can do all the cleanup, what should happen if our state gets destroyed. And then you can basically do whatever you like here inside to clean everything up in your application. Let's also look at the state notifier where you automatically update your UI. And here we have this immutable state. Therefore, we go here to another UI and this time we create here a state notifier provider. And inside of it, we put again a car notifier. And this car notifier is this time extending here the state notifier instead. And this time we also create here a specific model object and this contains in our fields. So I have here, for example, the speed and we also want to later have some doors which we can change. And like you can see, this state is immutable. So we have here a final object. This state cannot be changed. And therefore to change this state, we have here a copy method and then we always can create a new instance of our car. And here we can then put the modified fields inside. Let's go back to our car notifier and put here our car model inside. And then we need to call our constructor and in the supper constructor, we need to put an instance of this car model inside. So here we put this car model inside and then it gets here 120 and four doors as an initial state. And like before, we create here again some methods inside. So if we click here on these buttons, then we want to call these methods here inside. So we create here an additional method, which is called set doors. And then we want to change the doors of our car. Here inside, we always need to copy this state because it is immutable. And therefore we simply take here this current state and copy it. And then we put here the new doors inside, which we get from the outside world. And after it, you simply put this new state, which we have to the current state so that it gets overridden. And then our UI gets updated automatically. Let's also create the other methods. So again, like last time, we also have here an increase speed method and we also increase it by five every time. And here we then copy our state again. So we take the current state and put our new speed object here inside. And then we also override the state so that we have here our new state inside and then the UI gets refreshed again. Let's also create our last method for this button here. So we call the hit break and this time we again get here the speed like last time and we also copy the state again so that we put here the new speed inside and then we override our current state. Let's quickly summarize the state notifier. The state notifier has always an immutable state, so it can only be changed within the class and not outside of the class. And also we don't expose this state here to the outside world. Let's go now to our build method and implement all these buttons here and also the slider. And therefore we call here again the watch method like before. And here we put our instance of the state notifier provider inside. And now we need to call here also dot state because we want to listen to the state. And if you don't do this, then they are not listening to the state here. And then you can here access the state by calling car.speed or car.doors. And then you are basically accessing these fields of your model object. So we can go now to our text here and replace the zero with our speed object and also the doors with our doors object. The slider value we also can put to our doors value because every time if we change here the slider, then our doors should also change. And now we want to implement here our methods that if we click on it, then he is calling the methods. And therefore you cannot use here this car directly because this is only for our state. So this is only watching here for our state. And then you see we have here the access to our state. However, if you want to get access to this method within your state notifier, then you need to call here this 
watch state notifier provider without this state after it. And then you can see that we have here access to all the methods inside and then we can call them. So let's first of all go to our slider and here we can change actually the current value every time. So we call here the car notifier and not the car. And then you have here the access to the set doors method and can put here the new value inside. And this already works. So if we change our slider, then also our state changes. And this time we don't need to be careful about this here that we put here directly the car notifier inside because we are not watching here to the state. And if the state gets rebuilt, then we don't get here any notification about it because only if we call here this state notifier provider dot state, then we are listening to the state and here we are not listening to the state. So we can use this here also in our on pressed handler. Let's also implement these two buttons here. So we will put this watch method here inside of our build buttons and also here inside of this method. After it, we can listen here to our provider. And again, we don't put here dot state inside. So we don't listen to the state. We only get then access to the methods and can change the state with them. And because we are not listening to the state, we can also use this instance directly to call our methods here. And we don't need to go over our context because this is also performant. And we also call here for the second button, this car notifier hit break. And now we can try this example out and you see it is working fine for the speed also. And we can change here the doors. And again to mention is that also this state notifier has here this disperse method. So if you want to clean up anything after this state got here destroyed, then you can do it here within your disperse method. If you want to get this whole source code, you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get my Flutter course where I teach you how you can become a more advanced Flutter developer. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye!